Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Books, Girls, and Furs. My name is Leslie, and today we're gonna have a big ol' book haul and talk about all the books I bought. Alright, so <laughs> I will talk about the books that I purchased from Octavia's Bookshelf in Pasadena. It's a black woman owned bookshelf. It is I think the only one in Southern California. I can't speak for all of California, but um, as I mentioned before, S1 bookstore closed maybe a year or two ago, and so that bookstore's absence is definitely felt. And so I'm glad that there is now Octavia's Bookshelf, which is a nod to Octavia E. Butler. Octavia E. Butler's work, it's complete work. It is something that they do sell, but they also focus on other authors as well, uh, specifically BIPOC. So um, I picked up the second, Race and Guns in Fatally Unequal America. I picked this up because Stacy from the podcast The Stacks, uh, she's on tour right now for live shows, uh, talked about this book in one of her segments. Um, she also has an Instagram account and on the back it says in the second historian and award-winning author Carol Anderson powerfully illuminates the history and impact of the Second Amendment how it was designed and how it has consistently been constructed to keep African Americans powerless and vulnerable the second is neither a pro-gun nor an anti-gun book. The lens is in the citizenship rights and human rights of African Americans, revealing that armed or unarmed blackness, it would seem, is a threat that must be neutralized and punished. So if that alone does not suck you in, then I highly suggest that you listen to the Stacks podcast. Um, that host always has such incredible uh, questions and conversations around books and I always enjoy their opinion. So there's that. And I also picked up The Mothership from Tales from Afrofuturism and Beyond. I did speak on my uh, June book chat part two about the fact that um, I'm really enjoying anthologies or short story collections between reading full-length novels. And so, I mean, look at the cover. It's just absolutely gorgeous. On the back it says, Mothership, Tales from Afrofuturism and Beyond sets a bold new course for anthologies by showcasing the work from some of the most talented writers inside and outside speculative fiction across the globe. These authors have earned such literary honors as the Pulitzer Prize, the American Book Award, the Hugo, the Nebula, and the Bram Stoker, among others. They have garnered numerous accolades and have sold millions of books around the world. Many of their names are likely to be new to you. Mothership is your invitation to get acquainted with them and their writing. So that alone I love is that there's such a, um, a variation of authors from all around the world. And I'm sure when I get to reading this, I'm going to love it. All right. Oh, you know what? Did I, where did I get this from? Oh, I think that's only two books that I get from... Yeah, okay, so I thought it was three. I got two books from Octavia's Bookshelf. And then the next set... I hope I'm not getting mixed up. The next set are three, okay, this is three, that I bought from my local Barnes & Noble. I hope I'm doing this right, yeah. Okay, so I picked up White Horse by Erica T. Worth. I've definitely been seeing this uh, floating around Instagram. I love the cover. There is an Instagrammer, I think her name 
or her handle is The Wondering Reader, and she's really into horror, and I'm a bit squeamish, but she just seems to make horror <laughs> books, novels look so enticing, and so she's one of the reasons why I picked this up. And on the, oh, I should say the inside of the cover, it says, Heavy metal ripped jeans, Stephen King novels, and the occasional beer at the White Horse have defined urban Indian Kari James's life so far. But when her cousin Debbie finds an old family bracelet that once belonged to Kari's mother, it inadvertently calls up both her mother's ghost and a monstrous entity, and Kari's willful ignorance about her past is no longer sustainable. So yeah, that sounds good. Again, I just love the cover. This reminds me of a noir movie or something. Um, let me see. Oh yeah. And then I also picked up Night of the Living Res, stories by Morgan Talley. So this would also be a short story collection, I suppose. But Tommy Orange writes, there is so much brutal, raw, and beautiful power in these stories. Reading this book, I literally laughed and cried. And as you know, I love Tommy Orange. His debut novel uh, is titled There There. He has another book that's coming out and it's coming out sometime in 2024. I think it's called The Wonder... No, no, no. What is it called? It, it escapes me. I'll I'll put it below. <laughs> but I I just saw the announcement and got really excited. Um, all right, so it says on the back. Set in a native community in Maine, Night of the Living Res is a riveting debut collection about what it means to be Pinot Biscot in the 21st century and what it means to live, to survive, and to persevere after tragedy. In 12 striking luminescent stories, author Morgan Talty, with searing humor, abiding compassion, and deep insight, breathes life into tales of family and a community as a struggle with a painful past and an uncertain future. So yes, two books that are talking about having to face the past or not being able to uh, turn away from it anymore. And so for some reason, I'm really drawn to those stories. The third book that I picked up from Barnes & Noble is Lotaria. And um, it's written by Cynthia Pelayo. Um, this is apparently what the author wrote while she was in school. And then she just improved on it and published it. And it says on the back... The Mexican board game of Loteria is a game of chance, similar to bingo. However, in Loteria, instead of matching up numbers on a game board, playing match-up images, there are 54 cards in the game, and for this unique collection, readers will find one unique story per card, each based on a Latin American myth, folklore, superstition, or belief, with a slant towards the paranormal and horrific. In this deck of cards shuffled by a tour master in Cynthia Pelayo, you will find murderers and ghosts, goblins and ghouls, and all sorts of creatures that will make you sleep with one eye open. So somehow I'm turning towards horror in a way. <laughs> and the first one that's talked about is the rooster. Another cover that I love. All right, and I think those are all the books that are from Barnes & Noble. And then, let me see. The next stack I picked up from Village Well in Culver City. And I grabbed three. I picked up Kelly Little Hernandez, Bad Mexicans, Race, Empire, and Revolution in the Borderlands. And on the back it says, Bad Mexicans tells a dramatic story of the Magonistas, the migrant rebels who sparked the 1910 Mexican Revolution from the United States, led by a brilliant but ill-tempered radical named Ricardo Flores Magon, the Magonistas 
where a motley band of journalists, miners, and migrant workers determined to overthrow Mexico's dictator Porfirio Diaz and oust U.S. imperialists such as Guggenheim and Rockefeller. The rebels had to outrun and outsmart the swarm of U.S. authorities vested in protecting the Diaz regime. So yes. So I really, I, I really can't wait. <laughs> I know I'm going to love this. This is a history piece, so. This book next is um, The Magic Fish by Trung Li Xuan. I'm trying to remember who recommended this. I, I saw someone's YouTube channel. I think it was Elias Reads. And he mentioned that he read this and that he really enjoyed it. I think it's a graphic novel. Yeah, it's a graphic novel, but that it was really touching. And I thought this would be perfect for uh, my daughter and myself to read and be able to, to discuss. And on the back it says, In fairy tales, the prince falls in love with a princess, but Tian has a different story to tell. His parents are refugees struggling to learn English, and he doesn't know how to come out to them in Vietnamese. If he doesn't even have the right words, how can he ever know if his parents will accept him? The answer is in fairy tales, a language that Tian and his parents share. Tian learns from his favorite stories as he navigates the world with the help of friends, families, and fairy tales. So I just know it's it's most likely going to be a tearjerker, but the panels are really beautiful. Here's the back. So yeah, I think I found this in like the kids section of Village Well, and I'm glad I picked it up. Lastly, I picked up Better Living Through Birding, and it's by Christian Cooper. It is Ryan Reads. I'm gonna correct myself below <laughs> to make sure I have that right that has an Instagram and he has a really beautiful review of this book. Um, Christian is a birder and has a series, a short series on National Geographic. If you have Disney Plus, you should have access to it, I believe. And um, this is also someone that during the pandemic, um, had a white woman call on him and weaponize the fact that he's black. Um, so that when the cops showed up, um, I mean, I live in the States, like that, that could be very like harmful and put him in a, um, a life or death situation. And so that's how I learned about Christian Cooper is about when that happened. And he happened to have his cell phone on him and he was just out in the park being a birder and looking at birds when um, this interaction happened. And so if you know that, then you'll have some idea of who the author is. And on the inside it says, Christian Cooper is a self-described blurred black nerd, an avid comics fan and expert birder who devotes every spring to gazing upon the migratory birds that stop to rest in Central Park. Just a subway ride away from where he lives in New York City. While in the park one morning in May 2020, Cooper was engaged in a bird watching ritual that had been a part of his life since he was 10 years old. When what might have been a routine encounter with a dog walker exploded age old racial tension. Cooper's viral video of the incident would send shockwaves through the nation. In Better Living Through Birding, Cooper tells the story of his extraordinary life leading up to the now infamous incident in Central Park and show how a life spent bird watching prepared him in the most uncanny of ways to be a gay black man in America today. From time sharpened senses that worked just as well as a protest as in a park to what a bird 
like the common grackle can teach us about self-acceptance. Better living through birding exults in the pleasure of a life lived in pursuit of the natural world and invites you to discover them yourself. So I know when I get to this, I'm gonna love it. I think I might wanna get to it <laughs> when I'm feeling down or something because Christian Cooper is someone that is so filled with joy and optimism. Um, I've already seen a couple of episodes of his uh, show on birding and he is just, he has a lot of energy and I, I admire that. All right, so the next two books I picked up from Sideshow Books. It's a secondhand bookstore. Um, sometimes I'll take a peek in there because whenever I'm looking for a book that has not been recently published, I'll go there trying to see if they'll have a copy. Um, I didn't find any of the books that I was looking for, but I found two that have been on my radar for a while. And so the first one is Tennessee Coates, Between the World and Me. Um, let me see. And on the inside it says, and a profound work that pivots from the biggest question about American history and ideals to the most intimate concerns of a father for his son, Tennessee Coates offers a powerful new framework for understanding our nation's history and current crisis. Americans have built an empire on the idea of race, a falsehood that damages us all but falls between heavily on the bodies of black women and men, bodies exploited through slavery and segregation, and today threatened, locked up, and murdered out of all proportions. What is it like to inhabit a black body and find a way to live within it? And how can we all honestly reckon with this fraught history and free ourselves from its burdens? So I can't wait to read this. And it's a hard copy. I think it was only maybe 15 bucks. Uh, the next book it's really an old paperback, but I like the aesthetic. Does that, I mean, I wouldn't even know what a reprint of this would look like, but it's the autobiography of Malcolm X. Um, and I don't know if it has, I mean, we know who Malcolm X is, but I'll read the inside. It says, this is the absorbing personal story of the man who rose from hoodlum, thief, dope, peddler, and pimp to become the most dynamic leader of the Black Revolution. It is, too, a testament of great emotional power from which every American can learn much. But, above all, this book shows the Malcolm X that very few people knew, the man behind the stereotype images of the hate preacher, a sensitive, proud, highly intelligent man whose plan to move into the mainstream of the Negro Revolution was cut short by a hail of assassin's bullets. A man who felt certain he would not live long enough to see this book appear. I've already watched the movie about Malcolm X that had uh, Denzel Washington in it. But I saw that such a long time. I, I'm assuming I saw it, maybe too young. <laughs> I always got to watch whatever I wanted on, on television because um, I was raised by a single parent so um, that worked long hours. So the television tended to be my babysitter. <laughs> so um, I, I definitely had already seen it. I do want to see it again whenever I, I want to um, read this first. And I do remember it was... It was tough to watch, but I will definitely um, watch it again. But I want to—I want to wait till I read this first. All right. Last but not least, are three books that I grabbed from uh, the Devil Bezos. <laughs> Please don't judge me too harshly. I went into Barnes and Noble, and they have a weird system at my local Barnes and Noble now. I went to order a book 
and I don't know if I was being misinformed, but it was something like, for these, this particular books I wanted, I would have to absolutely order it online. And then if I wanted to, I could schedule it to be, be picked up in store. Um, but I couldn't order it in store to pick it up. It would have to be shipped to my home. It, they had like a weird system and um, I'm not sure why or if it had to do with this particular author because I um, grabbed two books by Marcos Antonio Hernandez and it's called Where They Burn Books is the first one and the second one is They Also Burn People. So these are paired together and they're part of a series and it's called Hispanic American Heritage Stories. Uh, they're, this is the third and fourth book. Apparently the first one is The Education of Wetbacks. When, growing up, that was a derogatory term. It still is, <laughs> but that's the name of the book. And the last book is Demons in the Golden Empire. And that's just that particular series. This author has three other series. And so I have a feeling I'm going to want to read all his work. But when I looked this book up, because there was an Instagrammer that I'm not familiar that mentioned this, that made me want to pick this up. When I look it up, it, it has these two books as one title, which is where they burn books, they also burn people. But it turns out that's how the audiobook is set up. So if I read the audiobook, it's going to be both of these put together for some reason. But when I purchase them in paperback, it's separate. I don't know the logic behind that, but that's how it is. Um, another thing is to know, I'm trying to figure out who publishes this. I think he might be self-published because when I look inside, I just see information about the author's website and paperback. Uh, it says copyright as the author's name. So I'm assuming that's what it is. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it. So on the back of where they burn books, it says, He went to be their savior, but will doing the Lord's work lead him into darkness? It is 1549. Friar Diego de Landa's devotion is beyond question. Convinced God intended for him to fulfill a whispered prophecy, the young Franciscan eagerly works to convert the Maya of the Yucatan Peninsula, and when he saves a girl from sacrifice and persuades her people to become Christians, he certain he's on the path of glory. Discovering a greedy Spanish landowner persecuting the native population, Fair Diego determines to protect them and punish the cruel man. But when he repatriates thousands of Maya and uproots centuries of indigenous tradition, the pious priest's obsessive pursuit may end up destroying them all. So I'm pretty sure when I read this, I'm going to get angry, <laughs> but I still want to read it. I was just reading about this and my heart just like called out to it. So I'm going to have to read both of these books, but also add an additional book that is funny because I don't know what else I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. And the next one is They Also Burn People. And it says, uh, 2010, Cortez Buscar yearns for his absent father to return, convinced it will happen if he can grow their church's congregation. The pious young man is devastated when he's fired after a co-worker implicates him in a drug deal gone wrong. Adrift and wandering into the more affluent city streets, he becomes enraptured by a beautiful woman who captures his heart with her kindness. Certain he's found his true love, Cortez sets out to win her from her wealthy and unfaithful boyfriend. But his fascination with the famous literature the young woman is reading infects his mind with a deadly descent 
into madness. Can this wounded soul recreate a literary fiction? So yeah. If anyone has read any of these books, could you let me know if I need to read the books, the other two books in order, or if it's okay if I'm just jumping into these? It seems like it's okay. Like, he did create a series, but it's more about uh, being thematically cr uh, connected rather than um, needing to be read chronologically, but I'll find out. All right, and the last book that I bought <laughs> from the Devil Basils is the Stygian Collection, which I just mentioned in my freakout tag, um, that this is a book that I was looking forward to, and I didn't know if I could order it through Amazon, but apparently I can, and I did. So on the back it says, Do you dare confront the demons lurking in the Stygian depths of the human psyche? Step into the shadow with 24 fresh voices, each offering their own unique twist on the meaning of Stygian. In this debut publication, you'll find yourself immersed in a diverse range of tales that explores the depths of human emotion. From dark horror and murder mysteries, the surreal poetry and philosophical musings, each story is a unique journey into the unknown. Experience the vengeful poem that unleashes Dante's wild spirit and the melancholy memory of railway tracks and the young witch who discovers the true power of flames. From the ancient past to the dystopian future, the Stygian collection promises to take you down a dark and winding path. You know what's so funny about this? That last sentence, I just realized this sums up what I enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy learning about history. I love nonfiction, but I also love speculative, speculative and science fiction. And so I just think that this book is most likely gonna encompass um, all my varying tastes. And I look forward to reading this, just like I, I, I wanna read that, um, book Mothership. Once again, I just really enjoy books that are uh, a collections of different authors and that just really helps me uh, relax into the next full-length novel, you know. Feels like I'm having a little bit of a literary sandwich, you know. <laughs> so um, that's all for now until next season. But yeah. I did some damage. Um, I think there's like a handful of books that I scheduled um, to grab onto moving forward. Um, yeah, there's gotta be like five for this year. And so the next video you receive from me regarding like a book haul will be somewhat predictable because um, I've been raving about certain books as my anticipated reads. So yeah, this is me getting wild. <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much for watching comment below let me know what you think subscribe if you're a returning subscriber thank you for watching thank you for indulging me <laughs> um i'd like to know what you think and i'll talk to you next time